here on the show, style expert Anya Saar has one garment that you can wear 30 different ways. We are here with Skip and Allison Bedell. They're from Spike TV's Catch a Contractor. I'm telling you, sometimes you just want to catch it. You go out and try to find a good one, and then, you know, you find them and you keep them forever. Yeah, well, you know, unfortunately, it only takes one or two bad contractors in a, in a whole neighborhood to make everybody else look bad. But, uh, you know, it's, when you find a good one, you want to hang on to them. How did you guys team up? Uh, well, I mean, off camera, that's that's what I do. I'm a residential home improvement contractor, and Allison, my I'm a licensed private in... investigator. I'm also in law enforcement. Two very different wow. careers. Yeah. Did, did you wow. stop him for a ticket? Is that how you met? Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> hired him to fix up yeah. the bathroom. Yeah, I was in the Home Depot. I was in the Home Depot. I, yeah, I, wow. the home I was depot. in there to be getting loved. some material. Yeah, it just, we just bumped into each other, and it just sparks flew. And yeah. it just wow. works for this show perfectly. Yeah. Did they come to you going, we want to, we, this is unique, we want to build a show around you? It's an interesting, uh, you know, concept. When it, when we the, the the idea had formed together, we came out together and uh, we shot the you know the pilot for the show. And when they met Allison, they actually found that she was in law enforcement. She had just you know come along to be with me. And uh, I do investigations. It was a perfect in real life. match. So yeah, they had somebody else that was lined up to be on the show, and when they found out what I did, they just thought that was couldn't be better. Well, let, yeah. Perfect, yeah. let's take a look at what you guys do. This is a, this particular uh, the clip that we're going to see. Is you guys confronting? Yes, yeah, so this this is a very confrontational show. You know, we get these guys back, you know, and they don't even know they're going to be confronted. So when they see us for the first time, it's usually a, a pretty crazy situation. And you hunt them down and yeah. you confront them. I, I hunt them down because usually what happens is these homeowners are at their wits end because this guy's not returning their phone call. They're not coming back to finish the work. They never came to start it to begin with. So my job is to find them, set them up, and make them think that they're going on an estimate, but they're actually going to a sting house, at which point... He comes out. Oh, wow. Okay. So they're never happy to see us. I bet. <laughs> All right, we're happy to see this, though. Take a look. You're telling me that you advised them that you can't be closed, and they said we can't wait. Close it Just up. Just come and close it up. Get it done. <gasps> oh, Why would a mother of four put her kids in danger this way? I don't know. Ask her. Oh, how can you? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, what happened there? What, what's the deal with that? So what had happened, we had stung this guy, and we got him to agree to come back to the, the family's house, and they were in the back room. When we got him there the next day, we walked him through the job and asked him all the things that he did wrong, and he was actually putting the blame on the homeowner. Well, they told me to close the wall up. They didn't care if there was mold in there. They didn't care. They said, listen, we need to get this job done, speed it up. And they were in the back room, unbeknownst to him. And when they heard that, you know, they, they flipped out. So there's a lot of confrontation, you know. But at the end of the day, we call them out on every one of their lies. We call them out on all of their bad work. And we give them no choice, to really, but to come back and do the right thing. What do you mean you give them no choice? Do you tell them you either do this correctly or we're going to press uh, charges against you? Well, so in the, in the sting process, we actually give them three choices, but there's only one that really makes sense to them. The first choice is you can give back all the money, which is never really an option because it's a year down the road. They've, They've spent, spent it. it. Yeah. Uh, number two is you can come back with us and fix the job properly under our supervision. We'll show you how to do it right. Or the third choice is if you don't want to do that, we're going to help the homeowner take you to court, file criminal charges against you and go that legal route. So usually it's the best option for them. What did this guy do? This guy chose to come back. Um, he, in, in the beginning, he was very resistant, like they all are. You know, uh -huh. they, they never want to do it. Uh, he but wrecked their kitchen. He took everything out of it. He did the demolition. He took everything that was out of there and fun functioning and didn't come back and yeah. build Just anything. Bear? That's what we found a lot of yeah. these guys. They get, they, get, they get the demolition portion part of the job done, yeah. enough to get a big down payment, and then they never come back. So they many, had to get their water in the, in the, in the garage. These yeah. poor people had four kids and, you know, and no, no kitchen, kitchen at all. It was, it was just there was a, no lights in there. They had to walk around the house with a flashlight. So, so there are no semi-contractors who come in and do the lighting and come in and do the tile. And there are, yeah. there are, but this guy was totally unprofessional, unlicensed. He was attempting to do it all himself and not oh. qualified to do oh. any of it. And and the Which homeowners is, can't afford to hire. Right. They can't the because they, they spent, all their money. They spent right. all of their money. They're at their wits' end. So usually, by the time we get to them, they they have no other choice. You said something very important, though. You said that he didn't have a license. He didn't. And in fact, this particular guy, you know, uh, he had actually mocked up his own license. He had copied someone else's oh. logo, stole wow. someone's license number off of the uh, state licensing bureau. Wow. 
website and actually made up a certificate like on a, a Photoshop type of thing and, and actually gave them a fake license. So that's taking it to a whole other how level of fraud. That? Wow. So, so how do you make sure then it is done correctly, that this family is not out more cash that, that it's done and, cor and corrected. Yeah, and when, we, when we get there, we, we do everything by code. We have all of our work permitted, all inspected. Every phase of the job is done by you know certified professionals, electricians, plumbers. We do all of the carpentry. But we, we drag him through the whole process, and we make sure that he understands that everything that he did was wrong. And, and the idea of it is to make sure he doesn't ever do it again to anyone yeah. else. They teach him the right yeah. way to do it. And, sure. they, and basically, it's the accountability that's a big part of the process with the contractor that they bring back to the house. They want yeah. to have them be accountable for what they did. They hope to show him the error of his ways and even get an apology, hopefully, by the end. So That's the best case scenario. You know? right. yeah. How do well, these guys, I mean, he just, oh, for the record, he corrected it, right? He went back and fixed it. He did. It. He came back, and in this particular guy, he was the only one that we ever got big emotion from at the end. Usually they're like, all right, listen, I'm happy, we're, we're done, you, here's your house back, and, and they hit the bricks. This guy, we actually felt like we made a breakthrough. He actually broke down and cried, and it was sincere. Like, we could yeah. tell that we got through to him. So not only did we put the house back together and, and help their lives, but I think we made some changes in him, too, which was well, great. What I do if... If I don't have a private investigator and a dude with enormous muscles and tattoos to help get a contractor to respond, how can I get a contractor who's being unresponsive? One of the things that, yeah, one of the things I always tell people is when you're in that initial interviewing process of getting a contractor, only deal with people that are licensed. Because if you come into a situation where you're having problems or discrepancies with your contractor, you can go to the state licensing board and get some assistance from them. They will enforce it. They'll send an inspector out and they will threaten violations or charges or possibly even revocation of his license and make sure that he gets the job done. But if you're dealing with someone that's unlicensed, you don't really have a leg to stand. But in you don't this have case, they thought that he was licensed, but it was a fake right. license. So that's, we'll, that's right. So we were their last win. option. You have to do you know, a lot this of particular homework. Case. Wow. Yeah. Watch, if you get a chance, if you're thinking about remodeling, right. watch, catch a contractor. You're going to get some insightful uh, knowledge on, on how you can make those good decisions. Sundays, 10, 9 Central. Full episodes available, by the way, on their website, which is spike.com. Thank you. Thank you very so much. I got a project. We're going to take out that wall. <laughs> and Matt, show them Let's what we need started. done. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> no, you're up next, Matt. Nice. Uh, next, everyone in America is talking about Ebola. I'm going to tell you the real scoop on this disease, what you need to worry about, and what you don't need to worry about.